Kristen here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are learning a new stitch, the Jasmine stitch. So I recently posted a reel on my IG and I got a lot of great feedback on it and a lot of you wanted to know how did you start this stitch? How do you work it? Can you share a tutorial? So here it is. And so first I'll show you um, how to create the foundation of this stitch and then how to work it up to create this beautiful fabric. So today I'll be working with a category four worsted weight yarn. This is the I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby in the color Ivory Tweed. And I'll be using a six millimeter hook and it's from the brand Knitter's Pride. We'll start off by making a slip knot and you don't have to make it too large. Insert your hook and chain one. And then we're going to extend that chain that we just made to the height of the puff that we wanna create. Now you'll yarn over, insert your hook through the hole created by that slip knot and draw the loop. And we're gonna repeat this two more times. So yarn over, Insert your hook, drop a loop, and last time, yarn over, insert your hook, and draw a loop. So at this point, you should have seven loops on your hook, and then we will close it off by yarning over again, holding the back of that yarn, and then slowly drawing it through all of the loops on our hook. Now take your hook and insert it through the loop that you're holding, yarn over and close it with a slip stitch and then slip stitch again and you've completed your first puff. And so you'll continue creating puffs in order to create your foundation at the length that you need. So whether you're making a towel or a blanket, just continue working this part until you get to your desired length. So once again, we're yarning over, inserting our hook, and drawing up a loop three times to create each puff. To continue working on my foundation until I reach six puffs I'll do most of this off camera and then I'll come back and we'll work on the next step is my completed foundation row and I have a total of six puffs. Now we will turn and work back in the other direction and we'll start off with another standalone puff. I'm going to refer to this one as an anchor puff. Each row will have an anchor puff and then you will begin to work the jasmine stitch. So once again you will start off by yarning over, inserting your hook, drawing up a loop three times, and then closing it with two slip stitches. And now we'll begin to work our jasmine stitch. So where I'm indicating in the video are the three points where you will create your cluster of puff stitches. And those stitches put together will start to create the petals of your jasmine stitch. So starting off again, yarn over, Insert your hook, drop a loop. You'll do this three times, but instead of closing off your puff, you'll continue to the next space. 
yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, drop a loop, and yarn over, insert your hook, drop a loop. So you'll do this one more time for the next space. And notice that for the second and third puff, you will only have six loops on your hook. So once you've completed all three of your puffs, you'll have a total of 19 loops on your hook. We will yarn over, holding that yarn, and then carefully draw it through all 19 loops. And this can get a little tricky sometimes, so if it gets caught, just pull it apart and, and redo it. Insert your hook through the loop that you're holding, yarn over and close with a slip stitch, and then slip stitch again. And so you can start to see our petals forming. So we will continue working the jasmine stitch down our foundation row. I'm going to continue working the jasmine stitch down our foundation row. I'll do this off camera and then come back until I get to the very last stitch to show you how to end off your row. Once you arrive to the end of your row, you will work your jasmine stitch in the points that I am showing in the video and the last puff stitch might be a little harder because you're working into that uh, space created by the slip knot that you created in the beginning but that's okay. Once row one is completed, you can start to see the beginnings of your flower pattern. And the front and the back of your fabric should look exactly the same, which is really nice. So now we'll work the same stitch back in the other direction. So we'll turn, create our anchor puff, and then continue working in the jasmine stitch. So once again, your anchor puff is the only standalone puff in each row. You will yarn over, insert your hook, and drop a loop three times, and then close this off with two slip stitches. And then you'll begin to work your jasmine stitch, creating uh, the cluster of puff puffs that make up the petals of your flower.
I will continue working the jasmine stitch down my row and come back once I get to the end to show you how to complete row two. So once you arrive to the end of your row, you'll complete a jasmine stitch as normal and you will insert your hook for that third puff into the space in between puffs from the previous row. So it's this little space right here that you'll create your, your third puff. So all of the rows from this point are worked just like row two and as you can see it works up very nicely you can now see the flower pattern and it's a very thick squishy fabric uses a lot of yarn definitely so I highly suggest um, before you start a project to create a gauge swatch so you can plan out your projects better and make sure that you have enough yarn in order to complete your project well, we're at the end of our tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and see you in the next video. Bye.